Hello, my name is Daniela Burbaza, and I'm the Executive Director of the Hyperledger Foundation. And I'm really happy to be here today talking about enterprise blockchain technology and what's next for enterprise blockchain. Blockchain Expo is one of my favorite events, whether it's in Amsterdam or London or Santa Clara, California, and I really can't wait to see you all in person in 2022. But today's presentation will have to be virtual, hopefully one last time. At this event, you have heard many speakers talk about different use cases using Hyperledger tech already. And today I wanna to share what the Hyperledger community is doing because there's some really exciting things that we're working on that the audience here today will find valuable to engage and participate in. Perhaps some of you in the audience are new to Hyperledger. So let me give you a short overview of what the Hyperledger Foundation is and why it's important in the development and governance of open source projects that are about multi-party systems like blockchain and blockchain related technologies. I also wanna share with you why we just rebranded from Hyperledger as a project to Hyperledger Foundation because it is important to understand what has been going on at Hyperledger over the last six years and where we are headed. The Hyperledger Foundation is an open source project hosted by the Linux Foundation. For the last 20 years, the Linux Foundation has enabled companies to drive global innovation in neutral and collaborative ways by growing open technology ecosystems that really transform industries. They're typically focused on enterprise use cases. And today I will share with you how Hyperledger is doing that across many industries. The Hyperledger Foundation is about to celebrate our sixth year and in that time, we have built a community of software developers building all sorts of technologies for distributed ledger applications, many that today are really core blockchain technologies used for enterprise purposes, and that many of you perhaps have used. We are also a consortium of many different companies working together to build a commercial ecosystem on top of this open source code and really drive the adoption of that across the globe. And last but not least, we are a community of thousands and thousands of individuals worldwide who focus on things like our special interest groups across various sectors, healthcare, supply chain, trade finance, as well as working groups and other project communities. In our Hyperledger landscape, we now have 18 different projects, including our most recent addition that came from Hyperledger Labs, where a lot of innovation is currently happening. It's called the Blockchain Automation Framework, and it's right there. And we'll soon have an official project name and a nice logo as well. Our landscape of projects are about DLT frameworks like Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Sawtooth, and our newest DLT, Hyperledger Bezu, which became a project in 2019 and is an Ethereum client designed to be enterprise friendly for both public and private permission network use cases. There's also toolings and libraries like Hyperledger Caliper and Cactus and Hyperledger Firefly, which enables developers to build blockchain apps for enterprise radically faster by allowing them to focus on business logic instead of the infrastructure. And that supports Hyperledger Fabric and Bezu as well. But to be clear, it's all about software. We're not a token and we're not even just one protocol. This is all open source software for you to adopt to build your own blockchain networks. And when I say you, I mean you and your network organizations that you do business with. And you can build any kind of enterprise blockchain that you know is possible using these open source code bases. The Hyperledger Foundation operates globally with members all over the world. And we've shipped quite a few production releases of this technologies and are up to six graduated projects, including Hyperledger Fabric, which is already on version 2.3 plus and includes a long term support or an LTS. Many of these projects are used today in very large number of production networks, and I'll talk about that in a bit. We also have a really wide footprint of local meetups and community participants all around the world that number close to 80,000 people participating. Now let's talk a bit about adoption and use cases that we see. In Deloitte's 2021 Global Blockchain Survey of about 1,200 senior executives, 81% of the survey respondents agreed that blockchain technology is now broadly scalable and has achieved mainstream adoption. Here at Hyperledger Foundation, we believe that a lot of that has been because of Hyperledger and the code bases that we've delivered. A recent Hyperledger brand survey we did for our Hyperledger members surveyed 250 business professionals and IT professionals in the market. And the results are positive for enterprise blockchain in general. When we asked where they see blockchain 
technology going over the next two years, 87% of them indicated that it was rapidly or moderately growing. And that's good to see. In the same survey, 58% of the survey respondents viewed open source as the most appealing enterprise blockchain attribute. So the market as a whole is starting to understand and adopt open source technologies. And once again, Hyperledger since 2016 have been building that market and that understanding. When the same audience was asked about which categories blockchain was being adopted, it was not surprising to see financial services, supply chain, and identity leading the way. And I'll talk more about these leading categories later. There's a publication called Forbes that many of you may know that runs an annual survey of enterprise blockchain production deployments. These are companies with revenue north of $1 billion who are using blockchain in the enterprise. And when they each were asked what technologies they were using, what tech are they running this blockchain project with, in 2021, over 60% said that they were running Hyperledger and 29 of those listed Hyperledger Fabric. Another more recent data point came from block data in summer of 2021, where the top global 100 companies by revenue were surveyed. And out of the 30 technologies surveyed, Hyperledger Fabric was identified as the most preferred DLT of choice by those top 100 companies, with 26% of them currently using the technology. So no doubt, Hyperledger Fabric has become the default of many enterprise use cases and is a great starting point for anybody to consider when deploying blockchain applications. But we have many other projects that I will highlight and that I have also gained a lot of traction in the last few years. Today, blockchain is much more than just Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, as many of you know. In fact, there's some really key areas I want to walk you through where blockchain technology is being used today, and we have a diverse amount of use cases across many sectors to talk about. The first, obviously, is payments. In trade finance, Hyperledger continues to dominate, like with the GSBN that uses Oracle's Hyperledger Fabric platform and Alibaba's Cloud Fabric offering to have a network that both resides inside of China and outside of China. Trade Lens, which according to public record has already tracked over 42 million container shipments and over 2.2 billion events with Hyperledger Fabric, and WeTrade, which now has over 16 banks across 15 countries that is also supported by Hyperledger Fabric. We recently published a case study on that that I would encourage you to take a look at. So these systems scale and the technology is ready. On the CBDC or central bank digital currency front, use cases like the Bank of Cambodia's Project Bacan, which is the first retail CBDC to launch, uses Hyperledger Eroja. And the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank with Dcash is using Hyperledger Fabric. The Bank of Thailand's project is using Hyperledger Beisu, among many other Hyperledger CBDC projects that use Beisu. And just a few weeks back, the Bank of Nigeria launched their CBDC also with Hyperledger Fabric. Here you see some of the publicly identified CBDC projects and experimentations with Hyperledger all around the world. Once again, the technology is ready and innovation is happening with Hyperledger. Obviously, another big one is in the supply chain and Providence use cases. And really, if you think about it, every industry has a supply chain somewhere in it. And supply chains are the heart of the modern world, especially the global mo modern world. And uh, we all hope that our Christmas presents get to us this year. Um, some examples here, um, car manufacturing, uh, for example, with circular for responsible sourcing um, for um, materials that are used for um, uh, electric batteries. Um, Walmart has also reinvented the core supply trace traceability system with Food Trust uh, using Hyperledger Fabric, um, and they've actually reported the sourcing information on produce that used to take seven days can now be down to 2.2 seconds. Um, they've really driven the adoption of this in a really major way um, in the retail industry. And by using decentralized technologies, there is an element of trust across their entire supply chain. Another example is Zulig Pharma Easy Tracker which I think was uh, discussed here at Blockchain Expo earlier today, and is a blockchain-based solution that provides pharmaceutical manufacturers visibility and traceability over their products' movements throughout the supply chain, transforming parent, uh, patients' mobile devices into instant verification tool, um, and that also uses Hyperledger Fabric. 
Another major use case is digital identity. And here we see companies like uh, credit card unions in the United States, for example, who provide portable financial information for their customers of their credit unions so they can move from one credit union to another and get financial products uh, between these two different organizations. And they've onboarded over 20,000 uh, customers into that platform uh, using uh, Bonafi. There's another product that has been built by IATA, the International Airline and Travel Association, in partnership with a company called Evernim to build something called the Travel Pass, which helps provide proof of vaccination status to help reopen global trade and global travel. And that uses Hyperledger Indy and Hyperledger Aries, as does the CITA project, uh, which Indicio has built, which is the Aruba Secure Health Card, another a proof of vaccination uh, app that is built using Hyperledger Indy and Aries. Um, and there's so many more examples here, and I think it's important to note that it's not just the identity of humans or individuals um, that can be enabled and traced, um, that there's a lot of implementations using blockchain technology, but also of devices, IoT, etc. Think about cars in the supply chain or other kinds of products and being able to attach information independently to those products, even those products change hands um, and they move around a network. Um, it's a really powerful concept that traditional centralized databases and systems just don't achieve. Um, ID, Human, um, ID Union excuse me, in Europe is a consortium of major companies like manufacturers, uh, Siemens and Bosch that are building production level infrastructure for verification of identity data across many sectors, finance, manufacturing, public sector, and healthcare, uh, also with Hyperledger Indy and Hyperledger Aries. So it's clear that there are a lot of choices and options on how to build blockchain applications, and that there will not be a one network to rule them all kind of scenario. Um, this leads to many advancements and innovations that have been happening in our ecosystem. And with the adoption I just shared with you, um, this is driving a host of new development priorities uh, tied to interoperability, modularity, privacy, performance, and more at the Hyperledger Foundation. So let me quickly point you to some places in our community where interesting work is happening so you can get involved as well. One of the benefits of modular approach across multiple projects is that we're able to work together as a community to tackle complicated and innovative approaches. Across all Hyperledger projects, our goal is to work together as multiple communities to define common modules, reuse common building blocks, <laughs> no pun intended, and extensible code bases that have diverse developer community that allows for rapid experimentation and innovation. On the interoperability front, Hyperledger Cactus is a plugin-based framework which aims to provide developers with an abstraction over protocol-specific implementations and enabling interoperability. This enables solutions to more easily adapt to new protocols and make transactions involving multiple product, uh, public or permission ledgers. It already supports interoperability between uh, blockchains like Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Besu, uh, Hyperledger Eroja, Hyperledger Sawtooth, GoCorum, um, and the project's also working on Corda and Substrate. Uh, we welcome you to participate in this important project. Many people don't know this, but Hyperledger has had Ethereum support since the EVM, so the Ethereum virtual machine was first introduced to our community in 2017. And then in August 2019, we welcomed Hyperledger Besu, which is a Java-based Ethereum client that is designed to be enterprise-friendly for both public and private permissioned use cases. As I mentioned before, various CBDC projects around the world are currently using Besu. Uh, there's a project called the Utility Settlement Coin uh, by Finality and a bunch of other major banks, um, and that also uses Hyperledger Besu. Um, there have also been some major NFT project launches, like Damien Hurst's The Currency Project, which is a really neat project uh, where Damien Hurst's uh, 10,000 pieces of art were shared uh, or were sold. And now, uh, one year later, they uh, the owners have to decide if they want to keep the digital NFT representation or the paper. Um, that was built with uh, the Palm Network that also uses Hyperledger Bezu. Uh, and it's a pretty interesting uh, project to keep uh, at your your eyes on. Uh, another one was DC Comics, um, and they launched their NFTs using a Hyperledger Besu as well with a Palm NFT. We have many community resources to get you up to speed on Bezu, including a free essentials course that is self-paced and you can find on hyperledger.org um, training. 
As we think about enterprise adoption and production use cases, uh, the topics of performance and scalability also come up. And these are two characteristics of any platform. Uh, in terms of most of the Hyperledger projects, both will directly relate to end user satisfaction and ultimately the adoption of the project. For instance, if a code base consumes too many system resources or does not complete an action in reasonable time with respect to other solutions, it will not succeed. Um, same thing if a product does not scale well, horizontally or vertical, it will not succeed. So we do have a working group um, that is open for anyone to participate, um, which purpose is to discuss, research, and identify key metrics that relate to the performance and scalability of blockchain and blockchain-related technologies. Um, and you can join this open working group to contribute and learn more, and there's some interesting projects going on there. And last but not least, and perhaps one of the most important initiatives we have here at Hyperledger that will touch all of our lives is digital identity. Briefly, I will mention our Hyperledger projects, Hyperledger Indy, which is a DLT framework that provides tools, libraries, and reusable components for providing digital identities that are rooted on blockchains. Hyperledger Ares, which provides a shared reusable interoperable toolkit designed for initiatives and solutions focused on creating, transmitting, and storing verifiable digital credentials. Both Ares and Indy are being adopted by some of the leading digital identity projects out of uh, Canada and the European Union, as well as Asia. Um, and I can do a separate presentation on this topic alone, and maybe at next Blockchain Expo we will. Um, I also like to point out a sister project the Linux Foundation is working on digital identity and digital trust, which is called the Trust Over IP Foundation. And it's defining the complete architecture for internet scale digital trust. Um, trust Over IP promotes global standards for confidential direct connections between parties in the digital world, helping protect citizens and business entities by anchoring them with verifiable digital signatures. We leverage these opportunities for interoperable digital wallets and credentials, and there's a lot of great work that's happening over in the Trust Over IP, and these three communities work very closely together. I'd like to wrap up by encouraging all of you to please take a look at the resources we provide at Hyperledger to learn more about enterprise blockchains like our case studies. And we just published the 10th of this year, including case studies on supply chain, land titling, trade finance, security, and more. Um, you can also catch up on a lot of content that's being produced all year uh, with hundreds of demos, presentations, webinars, and tutorials that are made for our Hyperledger community by our Hyperledger community on our YouTube channel. And remember, <laughs> there, you don't really have to go at it alone. There's a rich commercial ecosystem, and you can find your next partner via the Hyperledger vendor directory or the Hyperledger certified service provider ecosystem, which is a global network of technology partners, system integrators, consulting firms, and solution vendors from a variety of industries working with Hyperledger technologies. And we're now numbering over 27 of those HCSPs, which is great to see. So here's your invitation. Join us, when, whether it's a community call, uh, like a special interest group, or maybe that performance and scalability working group I mentioned, or a project uh, call. Um, contribute, uh, your, 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 you fix a bug, contribute to a code requirement that you need, um, or maybe just some documentation. Um, there's lots of different ways to contribute to our projects and our labs. Uh, we want you to participate in this open community as we continue to grow and innovate um, in this marketplace. Um, please make sure to read our blogs and our developer resources um, and sign up for our newsletters on our website it includes our weekly developer weekly newsletter um, as well as um, our general uh, monthly. Hi, thank you for spending the last 20 minutes with me. I really appreciate it and I hope you found it valuable. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be here for the Q&A today because it's the middle of the night in San Francisco, but staff has told me that if you put questions into the chat that they will get those to me and I will reply to you. Otherwise, please contact me via LinkedIn or um, on Twitter. You can also send an email to dbarbosa at linuxfoundation.org and I will be happy to answer any of your questions and also point you to community resources. Once again, thank you. And please join us at the Hyperledger Foundation 